Unreleased bombshell evidence has one of AH's co-conspirators throwing James Franco and a rocket man under the bus, but more importantly, it shows that AH should have won 100% lost their counterclaim. Why? Because the statements that Adam Waldman made, he didn't make those without some type of backing. No, he made it backed off of the claims of one of the co-conspirators that was there, one Josh Drew. Now, there are some huge, huge allegations in this, too. Ones that talk about conspiracy, ones that talk about a plan to basically set up JD. They also, they add in a why and what for, yeah, you and I, we're going to cover all of these together, too. Fun times, huh? Fun times indeed. So, hey there to all you fine folks on this fine day, by the way. I hope you are doing excellently. And talk about an absolute bombshell. I mean, this this comes from Adam Waldman. You can see his name right across the top here. This was listed for November the 11th, 2019. And this takes apart the counterclaim by A.H. It also it proves where a lot of statements they came from. They didn't come from Adam Waldman. They didn't come from JD. They came from co-conspirators with AH yourself. This is amazing. Why? Because that co-conspirator, Josh Drew, again, he throws a lot of people. AH, James Franco, Rocket Man, Rocky Pennington, all of them under the bus. Listen to this here. Quote, I have interviewed Drew. That would be Josh Drew. Here are the key points from that call. Number one, Rocky. Now, Rocky at the time, back in 2016, that would have been the best friend of A.H. That was also the fiancé of Josh Drew, so he would definitely know what happened. But Rocky and A.H.'s sworn stories that she was summoned by 8.07 p.m. text to come help her with a berserk J.D. was a quote-unquote lie. Hmm. Rocky was hiding in Penthouse 5 all along, almost certainly in the coat closet by the front door, which explains both the security guard's testimony that she never came past them and was already in the apartment when they entered, and JD's that Rocky just came out of nowhere past his right shoulder to go stand with A.H. Super important fact. And I hope he repeats it. Now, this first part is a huge statement, too. Why? Because Rocky Pennington, and again, I want to stress the idea that this is Josh Drew's ex fiance so he would be in a place that he would know about this, plus A.H. They went on record saying that the reason that she ended up in the apartment is because there was a text sent at 8.07 p.m. and Rocky, oh, she just sprang into action, came there right away. Now, Rocky's story is incredible, too. She says she left her penthouse, she ran down the hall, got to the door, it was locked, she ran back down the hall, went into her penthouse, retrieved a master key, went back Unlock the door, and like this says, you have security people in the hallway. Those folks, they would have indeed noticed that. Plus, JD says, hey, she just popped out of nowhere. She wasn't there, and then she was. And you've seen the setup to the penthouse. If somebody just entered, you would actually hear them. You would see them coming around the bend. Yeah, I mean, that that's something, especially when you look at who's talking about this. And this is going to get more interesting as we get to around number five. Number two, Two, though, this, I mean, it even gets better. You have A.H., according again to Josh Drew, was sleeping with the Rocket Man all week after the 21st, obviously not on Franco's night, the 22nd. Now, we've seen text messages between the Rocket Man and between A.H. that show you that things, they were indeed happening behind the scenes. We didn't get all of those messages either, which is fascinating. I'd love to know what all was there. Plus, we've seen the elevator footage with James Franco, so we know that those dates are correct. And Josh Drew, he's saying, yeah, those dates, they're on record. 
Those are indeed right, but there was a lot more added to that as well. Now, in number three, he also goes on to say that A.H. and the Rocket Man, well, they were into some kinky business together. He didn't elaborate, and it makes me wonder why exactly he brought that up. I mean, continuing on to number four, it makes you wonder were these connected here. She did have quote-unquote marks on her at times. He even seemed to suggest she had marks on her the night of the 21st, although, of course, we know that this is not true. In fact, you know, the mark thing on the 21st, that would have been discredited by his own statements here because he's saying, well, A.H. and her best friend, they were lying in wait. They were trying to set the man up. You know, basically, they were going to come up with something. And again, they're going to get even more detail to this. But when you look at that and then you look at statements about quote unquote marks, yeah, how does that work out? Now, of course, they say, do we know that he had ever given a declaration to A.H.? I bet he did back then. And yes, indeed, he had given a declaration back when. So, I mean, that had been on record, and he was probably trying to just cover himself in the aftermath. Number five here. I thought number five was fascinating because it shows you where certain statements came from. It connects to number one. I mean, there's so much packed into this message. Message. So, number five, there was a long gap between J.D.'s departure and calling the cops. And there was. There was quite a significant gap in there. The co-conspirators, they could never explain why all of that came up. But look at this right here. Perhaps an hour or more, he couldn't be precise. He said, though, during that time, they all sat together in Penthouse 3 on the phone with Samantha Spector, her divorce lawyer, who was guiding them to quote-unquote write it all down to get their story straight before calling the cops. Now, what's fascinating about this statement, by the way, is that we know a lot of these elements are indeed true. I mean, what happened right after J.D. left? Did they call the police? No, you had someone else call. I O till it right. Why? Because A.H. was on the phone. They were on the phone to PR reps. They were on the phone to lawyers. They didn't want law enforcement involved. Why wouldn't they want it, law enforcement involved? Because they needed to get their record straight, according to Josh Drew in this, which would really make things interesting, considering what story they ended up landing on what truth they decided needed to be told. Because again, this truth right here, it flies in the face of their sworn testimonies, and it explains beyond the shadow of a doubt why Adam Waldman, he went on record, he called all of this stuff a hoax, because he didn't just say that. J.D., he didn't tell them that. No, you had one of the co-conspirator groups they told him that himself. He was going off of their evidence. Why wasn't this bombshell presented? It's not hearsay. I mean, this is legal documentation. That's what lawyers' notes are. Ah, <sighs> yeah, it gets you wondering. But I mean, this, ah, this, this is magic. But anyway, let me know what you think about that. And as always, appreciate the heck out of you being here. You make this stuff work. Thank you. Want to help out the channel? Links are in the description. We could definitely use your help. Check out the book. Check out Locals. You being here, though, that is biggest help of all. So thank you. Appreciate you. Ended here. See you soon.